Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. I have a professional amplifier that I reviewed yesterday. Here is the Ashley NE8250. Um, it's an eight channel amplifier and uh, costs a fair bit for a pro amplifier, $2,400. Um, and uh, I suspect that's partially because it has eight channels. Um, it's uh, got the sort of traditional look. Uh, obviously, these things will be rack mounted and, and not, uh, uh, you know, put on a desk, but, but you can. And you can see my sample over here. And uh, the back connections are unusual uh, for our hi-fi industry, but quite common in, in custom install industry in that there are all these Phoenix blocks. Um, you can see uh, an example in here. So I had to make my own connectors and uh, XLR connectors out of these guys. Not difficult, you just have to make sure you get the pin 1, 2, and 3 correct uh, on this thing. Um, uh, the app is quite nice and functional. Uh, I should tell you that these controls look analog in nature, but they don't, they're don't. they not analog. The, I can actually turn them for a while, nothing changes, and all of a sudden it clicks 1 dB. And unfortunately you can't adjust better than, than 1 dB. So, uh, as you can see, I have a bit of channel mismatch when I measured it, and uh, I could not compensate for this. Either it would go uh, too low or too high. Um, the gain is a little bit on the low side, but pretty manageable. Uh, 25 dB. I like to see 29 dB, but when I set it to max, it stopped at 25 dB. So, this amplifier is getting a little bit of an advantage uh, compared to other amps that I test at 29 dB. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, biggest issue with this amplifier, as you'll see through, throughout the measurements, is, is this high level of distortion. You can see that, you know, that the spike is around minus 58 dB relative to our uh, main tone. It's the third harmonic that's, that's quite loud. And that sets our sign ad, which is the sum of noise and distortion relative to our signal. This is quite uh, poor. If you look at the... Uh, uh, all the amplifiers that I've tested, which I think is like 170 amplifiers uh, in the last three years, that it lands squarely in the red section, which is, you know, quite poor. Uh, you know, anything green is, is fine and good, and then blue is exceptional. So we really have quite ways to climb in here. I expect the noise performance to be poor, but it actually is not, which is a good thing. Some pro amps can be noisy. Uh, so at just 5 watts, it has 15 bits of dynamic range. This beats a lot of consumer amps. Uh, my target is 96 dB, but that requires being in this blue category to usually hit it. And then when you turn it up at the full volume, the uh, noise doesn't get elevated as, as much. So it gives you 18 bits of dynamic range, so it's high res ready. Uh, I didn't quite like the uh, frequency response uh, measurements on one hand and like that on another hand in that you can see instead of being flat in from 20 to 20 kilohertz, which is what these two cursors are, uh, it has uh, somewhat pronounced uh, roll off about one and a half dB at 20 kilohertz and the roll off doesn't stop till about five kilohertz. And then same with bass, uh, it rolls off, <coughs> excuse me down to you know two or three db at 10 hertz so as a subwoofer amp you'll have to compensate for that if you're going to use it for that uh the good news is that even though they say it's class d when i um switched the loads from four ohm to eight ohm the frequency response did not change uh many less advanced class d's will then show an overshoot uh or change in response when i switch from four ohm to eight ohm there's no dependency in here, so I don't know that it's Class D, uh, uh, but maybe it is. I suspect it's maybe more of a Class G with a switching amplifier, uh, but I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, crosstalk is good. There are consumer uh, apps that don't do as well. Multitone shows the problem again with distortion, and now we're, you know, if we measure that in, in bits equivalent, we get only 13 bits. Everything below 13 bits gets hammered and and lost in this intermodulation jungle. Uh, this is a very disappointing graph in that we see that the uh, noise dominates here, but unlike these two other reference amps, distortion starts to dominate before you even get to half a watt, uh, and it just climbs, and that's why five watts we had poor performance, and it gets a little bit better, but then it skyrockets. It tells me that it has very low level of feedback, uh, and that gives a sort of a, I don't know if tube is the right word, but it's the same as some of the poorly designed uh, consumer amps that don't have as much feedback. So um, anyway, so the distortion keeps climbing. At some point it really clips 
and that's about 312 watts, but that's very high distortion. It's so high that when I measure at just 1% distortion, we actually get less power. Usually this is the other way around. So spec is 250, we're getting 220, good enough. Um, it has no headroom because of the switching power supplies are regulated. And so they're, you know, peak power and, and uh, continuous power are usually the same. So more or less we're at uh, 240 watts. Go to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, at uh, 8 ohm, uh, same problem happens, just cl distortion climbs continuously and then goes up. So, not very good. Uh, it, a lot of those tests were 1 kilohertz, so let's sweep it at, uh, from 15 kilohertz down to 20 hertz. And we see this, this interesting hump that happens at all frequencies and gets worse at higher frequencies. This tends to tell me there's some kind of rail switching going on like class G. Class G runs the amplifier at lower voltage when it doesn't need as much power and then switches to a higher voltage and uh, continues to provide more power. And that gives it efficiency and makes the heat sink smaller. <coughs> and uh, we see that hump in here, although it could also be, you know, class D designs have all kinds of weirdness can go on with them as far as their transfer function. So, uh, not great, the whole graph is way up here, and then we have this hump in here around 4 or 5 or 10 watts, which is could be the average listening level you have. So you get more distortion at 5 watts than you do at almost 200 watts. So not good uh, on this front. So uh, instead of belaboring the point, you know, we can see that this this amplifier is essentially a distortion factory for its intended application of driving uh, background sound in a, in a venue and what have you. Nobody's going to care. But for hi-fi use, I don't think it's that great of a choice. It's expensive at $2,400. <clears throat> so for home theater, could you use it? But yeah, it's got copious amount of distortion. I've tested other pro amps that have much better performance than this. Um, anyway, you have the data if you want to buy it anyway. Uh, I'm told the owner bought it uh, on eBay and then had this thing serviced before sending it to me. Um, so now you have the full story. Okay, I'll make this short and sweet. See you in a future video. Bye-bye.